Hello, folks, and thank you for joining this special edition of Lumberjack Logic. I'm your host, Neil Johnson, and I want to thank my sponsors real quickly before we get into this video. I want to thank MyPillow.com, where you can enter promo code LUMBERJACK and save up to 66%. I love the pillows, especially the travel pillow that I will be using while I am out elk hunting. And I love the towels as well. And I want to also thank Freedom Hill Coffee. And uh, you can follow the link in the description below, or I will pin that comment as well. But freedomhillcoffee.com and enter promo code LUMBERJACK or follow that link and you will uh, get some great coffee. All right. Thanks so much, folks. And I'll see you when I get back. Welcome to another edition of Lumberjack Logic. I'm your host, Neil Johnson. Always excited to be with you. This is pre-recorded because I'm out in the mountains of Montana desperately searching for the Wapiti. Hopefully, uh, you guys can all keep me in your prayers that I get one and that, uh, you know, if we run into a grizzly bar, which I've run into a couple of them out there. It's an exciting time, always, when you see grizzly bears, okay? Especially when they're in the woods and they are the apex predator. But I've, 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 uh, I was told that, but you know what else I think? I am the true apex predator because I have weapons <laughs> that the bear does not <laughs> and i am not giving up my life for anything all right especially for a bear anyways folks i've got my special guest constitution vet on today and uh, we're going to be doing another uh, history lesson for you and history as it relates to modern day and how we can learn from that history and apply it practically to today so Without further ado, Constitution Vet, who does have his own YouTube channel, I recommend you subscribe to it. Don't only just subscribe here. I mean, certainly, if you have not subscribed here, what are you waiting for? <laughs> hit the little subscribe button. You hit that little bell notification, you even get notifications. Um, but without further ado, Constitution Vet, uh, take it away. His, his mm -hmm. channel is in the description below, so feel free to subscribe. Thank you, Neil. Much appreciated. All right, so let's get into this. Let me share my screen here. All right. You. Can you see it? Yep. Fantastic. So what image best describes America? Well, of course, that can vary person by person. Some people think diversity is a good image for America. And it is. It's the melting pot, right? Yeah. You can go more traditional. You got the bald eagle, you got the Statue of Liberty, pretty simple stuff. Heck, you could, you could even go to George Washington driving a Dodge, a Dodge Charger. <laughs> that obviously is America. I'm sorry, Dodge Challenger. My, my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> but the real image, in my opinion, of what makes America the country that it is, is this. Mm. It's one word, militia. It's the idea, the average... Every day, American people are able to arm up and defend not just their families, but their rights, their liberties against an oppressive government. There are two books that really drove this little presentation today. David McCullough's 1776 and John Adams. In both of those both books, books. Yeah, great books. They're fantastic. In both of them. He makes some clear points. The first one was that the militia were not soldiers of the military. They were average, everyday citizens of each colony. Man, woman, child, didn't matter. If you could operate a firearm, guess what? You were a militia. It was the militia, not the Continental Army, that served as the primary force against England's tyranny. Mm. After the Revolutionary War, the Second Amendment was created to protect the militia. A U.S. citizen is a militia. Don't be confused by that word. When you think of militia, you typically think of large, heavily armed groups, but that's not necessarily true. If you have a firearm in your home, guess what? You are a militia. So let's see what the actual verbiage says for this right. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Repeat those last three words again. Shall not be, be infringed. infringed. Shall not be infringed, folks. Shall, it is so easy. I, this is, I know they're always trying to jump around through all these different hoops and say, 
oh well that's back when militia and you know and uh you know you don't you know what about and they always use the hunting argument come on i love hunting but that's not what this is about read the stupid thing <laughs> it's not stupid read read the glorious there we go second amendment i just ah yes it is not about hunting my fine feathered friends it's not all right anyways let's go on to the federalist papers i got i got a little worked up there sorry hey, absolutely and, sorry, and you should it this is this is the right that separates america from every other country in the world every country has their own set of rights but it's america that has this crazy idea hey we're not just going to let our citizens say what they want but they're going to be armed Sure, that's a good Whoa. idea. Yeah, idea. <laughs> <laughs> so again, I'm not going to read this word for word. You can read it on your own. But to paraphrase James Madison below, he goes on to say that the Second Amendment is not just for hunting or self-defense. The Second Amendment is to protect the people from a tyrannical government. That's exactly what we did during the Revolutionary War. And that's what's happening now. Look at what's going on in other countries. England, Australia, France, Germany, Australia. Canada. Yeah. Basic human rights are being shipped away. Well, it's very easy because they're not armed. Those societies are not armed societies. But see, in America, when you start trying to impose tyrannical policies, eventually the people are going to get pissed off enough to where you might have another civil war on the horizon. Hopefully not, but that's the difference. Well, it's interesting, you know, I, I you know, being a student of uh, Western history too, you go back there and of course, uh, before uh, Sand Creek occurred, before uh, Wounded Knee occurred, they they told the uh, native tribes, yeah, yeah, you got to turn in all your weapons, turn in all <laughs> That did not work out well for them, people. It did not. In fact, it was horrendous. Okay, you go read the history on that. Right. Okay. And, and I would wager <laughs> that uh, those chiefs, if they were able to go over and do it all over again, <clears throat> would not have given up their arms. They wouldn't right. have done it. And to be fair, I love my country, but we've had a pretty dark past and our country has not been perfect. But oh, gosh, the, one no. thing, the one thing that we got right from the very beginning of this experiment was the Second Amendment. The First Amendment is great. Don't get me wrong. It's awesome. But how can you protect your rights without the Second Amendment? So let's go back to modern day. There are three types of militias. <clears throat> You have organized public militias. These are official state militias, such as the Texas state militia or the Arizona state militia. These are approved and basically given the, uh, the seal of approval by the state government. Unorganized private militias are non-officially organized militias who are formed up through individuals, paramilitary organizations based on their own interpretation of the concept of the militia. And finally, the family. When it all boils down to the fundamental truths of this country, if your family embraces the Second Amendment, you are a militia. So why does this matter? What's the point of this? Well, I firmly believe that one day another civil war will happen. And I do believe that's not going to be between states necessarily. It's going to be between two opposing forces. The ruling authority and the people. Well, that would be not so much a uh, civil war, but almost more of a second revolutionary war, what you're describing. Possibly. If that occurs, that would, be, Possibly. that would be better. But the question is, who is going to be that ruling authority? It's very easy for us to assume, well, it's just the federal government. Well... If that spreads beyond the federal government, you then have a civil war. So my point is, I don't want that to happen clearly, but how does this impact you today? First thing is know your state's firearm laws. Some are less restricted than others. While most states do have organized militias, some do not. 
If you're nervous about the future, save up, stock up, and train up. In other words, save money, buy firearms, get ammo, and train. Because it's this amendment that's going to protect the American citizens from an overarching tyranny that we're starting to see in Australia, England, France. Yeah. Well, and it's the only thing because if you have, if you are tyrannical in nature and you have people who are unable to protect themselves, well, you just do what you want to do, folks. That's how that works. Look at history. And so this last slide here, only in America will you see a, full, a fully armed citizenry ready to protect their lives, families, and freedom against an oppressive government. So this little YouTube clip here, it, it takes you to Dr. Steve's Turley YouTube page. You can just go onto his page on YouTube and type in militia and you'll find the video. He does a phenomenal uh, big picture analysis on how militias have changed dramatically within the past few years.